What's up guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. We are back from our long break and we are getting to work in the YouTube poker streets. Things have been going great overall, poker results have been good so far this summer, and we even made a trip down to Texas Card House that you guys will see here in a future episode. We've changed a few things in the format of the vlog, so please let me know what you think down in the comments. Enough housekeeping, let's hop into the video. We are taking you guys along to a private game session in Springfield, Missouri, where we are playing in a deep stacked 1-2-5 game. Buy in initially for $500 and things are getting pretty crazy, so buckle up. Early in the session, one of the first few hands we look down at is Pocket Aces, our favorite hand. We are in the big blind, we're starting things off with about $480 from our $500 buy in. Under the gun opens to $15, and yeah, guys, this is the kind of game we're in. There are four callers, so we are looking at a very bloated pot. By the time the action gets all the way back to us in the big blind, we raised up to 80 bucks and unfortunately everybody folds so maybe 80 is too big of a sizing it doesn't generally seem like that in this game uh, but yeah oh well not really a whole lot we can do except for use a smaller sizing the problem there is it could go like six ways to a flop and even with aces there we wouldn't be feeling too great so oh well take this one down getting some good cards right out of the gate hopefully we can keep it going a while after that, we look down at pocket sevens from the big blind again. We've got about $500 in front of us. The cutoff makes it 15 bucks. Low jack makes it 30 after like two players, including me, call. So kind of a weird dynamic in the hand overall. And it ends up going six ways to the flop. The action checks around on a flop of ace, queen, six with two spades. So super weird for an ace high flop like that for the action to check around, but it does. Turn comes down, the 10 of clubs, so obviously we've got like nothing here. Someone ends up betting a considerable amount. I end up folding. This hand gets all kinds of off the rails. There's a ton of money in the middle. Ends up ace, eight of clubs wins the hand. So yeah, ace, no kicker, ends up winning this extremely multi-way, very big hand. Uh, things are pretty out of control in this game so far. Hopefully we can pick up some hands because clearly there's going to be some money to be made. Quite a while later, we've been semi-card dead, haven't had a lot of opportunities to play a whole ton of hands. We look down at 9-6 of hearts, starting this hand off with about $520. I end up calling the button straddle pre-flop, and we go three ways to a flop, which comes ace-9-7 with the ace of hearts. I decide to go ahead and lead out for $15 here, and the button, who is a pretty tight player, ends up making the call. We're off to see a turn, which comes down to seven of clubs, I bet $30, and once again, he makes the call without thinking about it for very long this time. The river comes down, 10 of clubs, so pretty connected board. Um, it's also a paired board, so we've got two pair here. We don't really hate our spot until he starts making this speech about how much am I gonna bet on this street is gonna be 40 or $50. So it seems like he's pretty much determined he's going to call. So I go ahead and check since if he's going to call, I'm probably not in a great spot. And sure enough, he checks back and shows us a six of diamonds. So he flopped top pair and just wasn't letting go despite having a terrible kicker. So really hate how we played that hand in general, I think, except for the uh, smart check on the river. But oh, well, we'll take it. Um, yeah, we lose the hand, but we don't torch off on an, ex an extra like 50 bucks. A little bit later, it seems like we might be getting a little bit antsy. We look down at five two of spades from middle position one. We've got about 450 bucks in front of us. It's a button straddle hand like almost every hand in this game is, so we're effectively we're playing one, two, five. I end up making the call and someone makes it $10. Don't really understand the point of min raising the uh, straddle, but whatever. And almost everyone calls. We end up going five ways to a flop, which is a pretty good flop for us. The flop comes king, nine, of four, all spades. So flop in the flush right at the bat, action ends up checking to me and I bet out $35 into a fairly sizable pot. So uh, I think I'm okay with that sizing. We get one caller, just the low jack, who is a pretty loose player who likes to play hands against us. Uh, definitely trying to probably come from behind in this hand. There's no way he has a better flush or I think we would've heard about it. Turn comes down the four of diamonds. I go ahead and bet out 75 bucks. And without thinking about it hardly at all, our opponent makes the call. So we're a little bit concerned and definitely don't wanna see another spade come. Uh, would be super, super bad news for us as we obviously have a baby flush. Thankfully, the river comes down the seven of clubs, 
So I feel like we definitely have the best hand here. Time to go for some value, although we don't expect to get hauled by much. I would assume he maybe has a pair plus a big spade here, although maybe he would have raised that, so he might just have a big spade. We go ahead and bet out for $125, hoping to get lots of value from this one. Unfortunately, without thinking about it for very long, he puts in the fold. So take down a nice pot, but not as nice as we were hoping it was gonna be. So pretty quickly, after flopping a flush in that hand, we look down at ace, king of diamonds, starting this hand with about 600 bucks, and we're in early position. I open to $15, and the cutoff, the same player from the hand before, raises to 65. The player on the button makes the call for 65, which would seem super concerning, but in this game, it's much less concerning than uh, normal, especially given the player type we're going against. Gets back to me. Obviously, I'm going to raise it up here. The question is just how big. I decide to size to $175. I don't know if I love that sizing. I think I could actually go a little bit bigger. Things escalate quickly when the cutoff shoves all in for $350. So after the button folds, I have a decision to make, but against this player, it's not really a decision. He's been ripping in his whole stack fairly light, hasn't really been doing anything uh, that like makes me think he's a genius player. And also I have a long history with this guy and he could be doing this with hands pretty light, like all the way down to like ace queen, ace jack, ace 10 maybe even. And then of course their pocket pairs, which I'll be flipping against, but I'm in great shape on a, in a flip situation because all the dead money that the other player put into this pot. He rips it in, we make the call and he shows us ace queen. So we've got him dominated. We decide to run it twice, which I'm always happy to do if my opponent wants to, uh, regardless if I'm ahead or behind, really. First board, flop comes down, six, eight, deuce. Great, three, great, 10 on the river, great. So block up the first board, no problem. Second flop comes down, king high, so we love that. Got him dominated. Turns a five, river's a queen, so we scoop both boards, win a very nice pot, and win all these chips you're about to look at. A little bit later, we look down at pocket fours from middle position. We're starting this hand up with about $1,200 and it's a limped pot preflop. I don't mind limping small pocket pairs like this in games like this because people are not gonna be folding that often when you flop a set. So off to see a flop, which sure enough comes down a great one. Shout out Rampage. We flop a set with pocket fours here on Ace Jack Four. I bet six dollars and we get several callers, including our uh, favorite player in the game and the big blind. He who check raises to thirty-five dollars. I go ahead and make the call here. I don't know if that's good. Maybe I should just go ahead and raise again. Not really sure. It's such a weird situation with a limped pot and then getting check raised. The turn comes down a queen which we're pretty okay with, although he could have some combinations of king 10 in check raise. He's a good enough player to be doing that. He ends up checking though. I bet $45 and he makes the call. The river comes down a jack. Don't love that. He checks. I decide to go ahead and bet anyway though, betting at $100. He ends up folding and shows us ace 10 offsuit. So uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I like his check raise on the flop. I don't think that's terrible at all. And uh, yeah, take that one down. Pretty nice spot. A little bit later, I've got pocket jacks in the hijack, starting this hand off with about $1,200. The player that we got it all in, ace king versus ace queen, opens up to $15. There's one caller in between us. I'm going to go ahead and raise it up here with my premium pocket pair to make it 65 and a big blind calls. Well, this early position player rips it in on us again. This time he's got about $250. There is no way I'm going anywhere. I end up calling, the big blind folds, and we'd agree to run it twice once again. The first board comes queen high, so very excited about that, locking it up. Second board runs out all undercards to my pocket jacks. So once again, we scoop. He had ace king in this one, so very happy to take this down, holding on two boards for the second time tonight. Can't think that's gonna happen all the time, but we will certainly take it in this one. Not too long after that pocket jacks hand, we look down at pocket kings from the cutoff, starting this hand off with about 1600. So we're doing very well tonight. Actually limbs to me in a straddle pot, I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up here for sure, make it $25 and I get one caller. 
who's the only player at the table who's close to as deep or maybe even deeper than I am. He's a fairly tight player, so this is kind of a weird situation. Flop comes down 10, 7, 8 with two hearts. So not really expecting there to be too many fireworks, but things get weird right off the bat when he bets out for $35. Obviously, I'm just gonna go ahead and raise here. I don't know what he could really have that he's gonna call this raise with like my pre, I don't know what he's really gonna have that he's gonna call here pre-flop. So I pump it up to 135 and get some very weird news when after a little bit of consideration, like maybe 20 seconds, maybe something like that, he makes it $350 and has $650 additional dollars behind. I think about it for a long time, and the only thing that really makes any sense to me here is for him to have either pocket 10s, pocket 7s, or pocket 8s for a flop set. Maybe there could be some 10-9 in there, maybe there could be some ace-king of hearts. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, ace-king of hearts, I'm fine to get it in against any of his other holdings I ever really expect him to have here. I'm just in terrible shape. So I think about it for a really long time before eventually putting in the fold. Um, yeah, I think this is an exploitative fold. I think usually it's gonna be correct. But in this situation, unfortunately, we get some really uh, shocking and uh, depressing news when he flips over ace queen offsuit. So yeah, he just owned me here. Um, no two ways about it. I just think he's never, almost never showing up with a bluff. Um, in this situation he was, usually when this player gets super deep, uh, bluffing is not what's gonna happen, chips going on lockdown, and him getting ready to leave is what usually happens. So, oh well, RIP I guess. We live to play another hand, we don't punt off all of our profit, but pretty disappointed, could have won an uh, extra thousand dollars if we really get after it in this one. Although if I re-raise, he's gonna fold, so. Yikes. Oh well. On to the next one. Hopefully we can shake it off. In our last hand of the night, we've got eight six of clubs from middle position, starting things off with about $1,300. I open to 20 bucks and get four callers. So off to see a flop, very multi-way as usual. Flop comes down, jack six four with two spades. So we've got four black cards, but unfortunately they are not the same shape. So Action ends up checking through on this flop. Um, I, get, I mean, there's not a whole lot we can do. We can't even really represent this board too well. So yeah, turn comes down three of clubs. So pretty much a total blank. Um, nothing too crazy on here. The player who bluffed us the hand before bets out for $45. And I don't think this really makes any sense. He's the kind of guy that's gonna donk lead on this flop if he has a jack. Um, he could also bet out here if he flopped a flush draw, which obviously didn't complete. I don't really think he's calling my $20 preflop bet with any combination here that's gonna make a straight. So I think that I can actually be ahead here with my pair of sixes. So making the call, off Sea River, which comes down a jack of diamonds. So pairing the board and breaking out all the draws. This time he bets $85 and I am really not believing him here. This is not a sizing that he's gonna choose if he wants me to call. Um, yeah, I just don't believe him. I don't believe him at all. He just bluffed me. So I'm out for blood. I'm thinking there's a good chance I'm punting $85 off into the abyss. I made the call and he snap mocks. So not as big of a bluff as uh, before, not as big of a pot as before, but we end up bluff catching pretty, pretty well. I make too many hero calls in general. This is probably a move that will cost me money in the long run, especially since I was right. So I'll feel like I'm always gonna be right. But we take this one down and it is time to rack them up. Had a nice big winning session. We needed it. Well guys, that's all for this episode, and for $500 and out for $18.30. I know it isn't all shown in the cash out, I sold $500 to the guy taking my seat, so overall, a very nice winning session. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the hands. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel and want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button. It's completely free and a great way to support my channel. Feel free to leave a comment down below, I read and respond to pretty much every comment I get, and I'm always looking for ways to improve my content and my play. Thanks again for watching and good luck at the tables.